ഇവിടെ ഓർമ്മ City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 16th of July 2019. The Deputy Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the Council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges we are meeting on traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and that we pay respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and we acknowledge they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. The Council also acknowledges the vision of Colonel William White in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city in its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands which was recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australian planning heritage. Members, you may be seated. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to our council meeting. Uh, I'd like to move on to item three, apologies and leave of absence. We have an apology from the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor, Sandy Vashaw. And on leave, we have councillors Kuros and also councillor Martin. Members, moving you on to item four, confirmation of minutes of the meeting on the 25th of the 6th, 2019, and also the 2nd of July, 2019. I have councillor Sims moving, councillor Canole seconding. Any debate or discussion on those items, members? Be it that there's none, councillor Sims, sum up. Sounds up. I'll put that to you, all those in favour? All those against, those, uh, these items are confirmed. Members, we have two deputations uh, tonight that were granted as at the 11th of July 2019. Item 5.1, deputation from Mr Darcy Lunn, United Nations Global Goals for Sustainable Development. Uh, if I could invite Mr Lunn to uh, present to Council. He's not here. Okay, we don't have Mr. Lunn with us uh, to present the deputation, so we'll move on to item 5.2. Uh, Dr. Alice Clark, Shelter SA, making renting fair project to present to Council. Thank you. Please um, come forth to present to Council. Uh, Dr. Clark, you have um, five minutes um, to present to Council. Please go ahead. Hi everybody and um, thank you so much for allowing me to come and speak with you tonight and thank you to Councillor Sims for um, making this motion to Council about our campaign Make Renting Fair. So Shelter SA is the peak body for housing in South Australia. We are advocating for an affordable, safe, secure and appropriate home for every South Australian. We know that there are um, more than 120,000 South Australian households living with rental stress in this state. That is, they pay so much of their household income in rent that they can't afford to feed their children. Um, we know that homelessness is on the increase in South Australia. In any 12-month period, there are more than 20,000 people in South Australia experiencing homelessness, and 40% of that number are children and young people. So this is a very dire problem, and we have sought to address the rental uh, side of this problem through our Make Renting Fair campaign. So um, we uh, have three high level um, asks for this campaign. One of them is that we increase the number of pet friendly rentals that are available in the private rental market, given that pets are such an important part of people's families. Uh, we would like to see no cause evictions be abolished. Uh, through the legislation because we think that there are enough um, avenues for landlords and real estate agents to remove tenants if they break uh, their legal requirements under their lease. And we'd like to see more resources for tenant information, advocacy and education. 
So I will just elaborate, um, if I can, a bit on the pet friendly rental issue. That seems to have been in the media quite a lot recently. Um, so we are not advocating at all that every single private rental property allows pets of any description. That would be ridiculous. We're saying that there are such a small percentage of pet friendly rentals in the, in the country that we'd like to see that number increase. Um, we, we may not be able to legislate that, but we would, through a process of education and information, working with the Real Estate Institute, landlords and real estate agents uh, aim to increase those numbers. This partly came about because um, our current state government released their Committed to Safety Framework, which is all about addressing domestic violence in our um, city and our, our state. And they thought that um, introducing pet bonds in private rental would be one way to increase the number of pet friendly rentals. We have put to state government that um, that is a terrible idea given what we've uh, just talked about around affordability in private rentals, especially for people living on low incomes, that a pet bond will add to the financial barriers that people face to get into private rentals. Um, we, as I mentioned, know that pets are such an important part of the family, and particularly for families experiencing domestic violence, the thought of leaving that loved pet behind actually prevents women and children from leaving violent situations. Um, we know that more than 50% of bonds that renters pay are claimed by landlords. So that's a high number. We think that adding a pet bond will just be swallowed in that, that claiming of bonds. Um, and we know that hundreds of animals are relinquished to the RSPCA every year because they, uh, families can't take them with them into their private rental and sadly they are euthanised. So the RSPCA would like to see changes to these sorts of um, tenancy arrangements as well. So um, part of our Make Rent in Fair campaign around increasing pet friendly rentals is continuing to, to uh, say no to pet bonds. Um, and those other items I mentioned. So in terms of uh, tenant education and advice and advocacy, when people pay bonds, those bonds are lodged uh, in an account held by state government. And the interest on, those, on that money um, is and should be spent on tenant education and advice. And currently the entire amount is not being spent on those um, areas and we've seen recently the defunding of the um, housing legal clinic which provided representation and advice to more than 500 people experiencing homelessness in uh, South Australia has uh, been gone. So instead of seeing more resources we're actually seeing less. Um, so we would love to have uh, the Adelaide City Council behind us on this campaign. There are multiple um, other organisations getting behind it. It costs you nothing and it will really speak loudly um, for all your constituents who are renters in the City of Adelaide. Thank you very much, uh, Dr Clark. Thank uh, you. Thank you for your presentation. Um, Look, again, I might just call, I believe Darcy's just joined us. So, uh, Mr. Lunn, if you don't mind just um, joining us to uh, for a deputation on United Nations Global Goals for Sustainable Development. You have five minutes. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for that. Sorry for my late arrival. Um, I hope you're relatively familiar, or you might be familiar, with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. These are 17 goals for the whole world to work together to try and achieve some big things in the world, like ending extreme poverty, reducing inequality and protecting our planet. So it's a global framework for everyone everywhere around the entire world. Um, and I brought this up to council last year, and there's some new faces in the council this time around. And also I believe that there is a growing thirst and trend for this global literacy and competency, which the Global Goals provide for us at a local uh, and personal level. Um, so first of all, the SDGs or the Sustainable Development Goals or Global Goals, uh, as you may hear about them, um, they're basically to help contextualise and enhance the things that the City of Adelaide is already doing. 
So last year I came in with a strategic plan to, to 2020, I believe it is, um, and I think the process of forming a new strategic plan is underway. And it'll be fabulous to see local um, ideas and initiatives to match up with that global framework because it will, it will really contextualise the things that we do locally and how that fits in with other local councils around Australia and ultimately around the world. Um, it's also not a very difficult thing to do. It's quite easy to adopt these goals and, and to understand them. There are 17, which is a little bit daunting to begin with. Uh, there are 169 targets, 244 indicators, but often you will already be having some of these targets indicators within your strategic plan and your um, monitoring and evaluation, impact assessment, these sorts of things. So aligning them up is quite an easy thing to do, but it adds a global layer to everything that you're already doing. Um, I'll give you some examples. Uh, the 10 gigabyte Adelaide, um, initiative from the from the city of Adelaide is a perfect fit with industry innovation infrastructure global goal number nine global goal number eight um, decent work and economic growth so promoting businesses to have faster access to internet so yes these are wonderful things for Adelaide but you can speak globally when you are using these global goals because they are universal for every country and every person in the world so if we're trying to be a magnet if Adelaide is trying to be a magnet for businesses and people around the world, they add to that global literacy and competency that we can speak to um, as, as a city here in Adelaide. Another example would be the Adelaide Zero project, um, working towards ending homelessness. And so that fits in perfectly with Global Goal 1, which is um, zero, there's Global Goal number 2, Zero Hunger, which would be a part of that, but um, uh, ending poverty, which is Global Goal number 1. So all of these things, do have a local context, but then they also have a global fitting um, place that they kind of slot together. And then the other one is the idea around ending single use plastics or promoting cycling a bit more or any of the environmental things which, which this council is moving towards quite steadily. Uh, all of those, of course, have a global context as well. The air that we breathe isn't unique to Adelaide. It's a part of a global world. So it's, uh, all of these initiatives and ideas from the city of Adelaide do fit in with, with that framework and quite an easy thing to match up with. Um, I believe the city of Adelaide can play an active role at a global level. Uh, when we start to speak to these things so that we're, they're not just housed in the confines of our council but they do go across those borders and boundaries to other councils without the, throughout the state uh, with the LGA and ultimately fitting into a global framework um, as well. Um, and, and I believe that it gives the City of Adelaide an opportunity to be a leader and a pioneer as we have been for many, many years in many, many circumstances. I've just come from Melbourne. Their global literacy and competency is quite high. They have some very keen councillors there that are SDG literate. I don't know amongst you, um, some of you are very familiar with these SDGs. So it's quite an easy fit in with the things that council is already doing. Uh, and to finish off, the, the last thing is that on Thursday, so just two, two nights from now, um, we're hosting a, an event called 17X. Um, and this is a way to bring business, making good business argument for why the global goals are important and why they're not just a nice thing to do, but they're actually an essential part of who we are to, to make sure that the business is working towards sustainable futures, both for people, planet and for profit. So that's going to be quite a, um, an interesting event on Thursday night if any of you can make it out for that. And then ongoing myself, uh, I have a concept called Teaspoons of Change with Serafina and we try and contextualise these small things that we can do personally and how they fit in. And we'd love to see the council, um, when you're talking to the initiatives and, and changes that you're creating, to throw in an SDG here and there uh, to get the public, to get the administration on board um, and building up that, that universal language and vocabulary and lexicon that we can have to speak to local issues that fit globally. Um, so please feel free to get in touch and, uh, and maybe this is something that can happen internally within council administration and uh, with our constituencies and businesses as well. But thank you for your time and attention this evening. Thank you, Mr. Lund. Thank you. Really appreciate your time and presentation to council this evening. Uh, members, we'll move on to item six. Um, we have uh, four petitions, items 6.1, 6.2, 6.3 and 6.4. Um, item 6.1, and for the benefit of the gallery, uh, members, um, as you know, we've received a letter that was distributed earlier um, uh, that is disputing the claims made in the petitions with regards to item 6.1, which relates to changes to parking regulations on Bower Street, North Adelaide. 
Uh, petition parking in the western section of North Adelaide is the second one, and the third one is the stop proposed parking changes um, in Children's Street, North Adelaide. And then also the last one also relates to North Adelaide parking changes. Uh, Councillor Moran. Um, I'm happy to move that we receive the petitions, um, Acting Lord Mayor, but I take advice on the first one that has been challenged, the veracity has been challenged. So should we park that? Sure. So I'll take that. I'm happy that. to move the other petition be received. Okay, so let, let me just deal with that item uh, first by asking the CEO with regards to item 6.1. We're just noting or receiving those CEOs, so there's no implication. Yeah, through your Deputy Lord Mayor, that's the case. We're just simply noting, so there is no need to qualify it in any way. So you're happy to move all forward? Well, I just can ask a follow-up question. Is, is it receiving or noting? Because receiving is accepting it as a legal petition uh, properly collected. If we're noting, that's different. It's noting receiving. In the in the agenda, it says that we're actually noting. Um, the we're noting. Okay, I'm happy to move all three then. All four. Four. So I have Councillor Moran moving items 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, 6.4, seconded by Councillor Sims to be noted by Council. Members, any discussion? Put that back to Councillor Moran. Summed up. Summed up. I put that. All those in favour? All those against? Those four petitions are now noted. Members, we move on to item seven, report of the committee advice and recommendation of other committees to council, specifically relating to the committee of the 2nd of July, 2019. We have four recommendations before us. Um, members, we will deal with those recommendations one by one. So recommendation one, the Greening Award winners, background information. Councillor Donovan, you have to declare. Yes, I'm going to declare a material conflict. because and how, I, would, how would you like to do that? I will step out for the... And what's your material conflict for? Uh, because I live on one of the streets that was nominated. Excellent. Thank you. So Councillor Donovan will exit the room. Councillors, just hold your hands for a sec. One second, Councillor. Councillor Kerr. I, I've a perceived uh, conflict, Dr. Lord Mayor. Um, I live on the same street as one of the nominees, um, but I don't believe it'll impact uh, the uh, discussion or debate or my vote. So I'll, I will stay in the room. You'll stay in the room and you will vote? Yes. Okay, so that's noted. Any other uh, declarations of conflict? Okay, so I'll ask a member to move. Moved by Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Hyde. Councillor Moran, do you wish to speak? No, I don't. Councillor Hyde. Members, does anyone like to speak to the motion? Councillor Moran, to sum up. I'll put that to you. All those in favour? All those against? That item is carried. If we can just have Councillor Donovan called back in, if that's okay. Thank you, Sean. Councillor Donovan, we are now dealing with recommendation two, communications in other languages. Members, we have a recommendation before you for moving and seconding. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Sims, seconded by Councillor Ho. Members, any further debate? Councillor Sims to sum up. Sum up. I'll put that. All those in favour? All those against? That item is carried. Members, we move on to item three, recommendation three, community consultation policy. I'll also seek a mover and a seconder for that process. Moved by Councillor Ibrahim Zedder, seconded by Councillor Knoll. Councillor Ibrahim Zedder, do you wish to speak? Councillor Knoll. Members, that there's none, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham to sum up. Summed up. Summed up. I'll put that. All those in favour? All those against? That item's also carried. Item four, recommendation four, uh, proposal for multi-year event licence, uh, 2019 to 2024. I'll also seek a mover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Sims, seconded by Councillor Donovan. Any debate? I'll go back to the mover, Councillor Sims. Summed up. Summed up. I'll put that. All those in favour? All those against? These items are now carried. Moving on to item eight, reports uh, for Council Chief Executive Officer reports. The first one deals with the strategic alignment to green. 8.1, Parliament of South Australia inquiry into the recycling industry submission. Members, I have a recommendation before you. So moved by Councillor Sims, seconded by Councillor Moran. Any discussion? Right. Councillor Sims has reserved his right. Councillor Moran? Okay. Right. Any debate? Okay, go back to Councillor Sims. Summed up. Summed up. I'll put that. All those in favour? 
or those against, that item is carried. Members, moving to item 8.2, appointments of councillors to the Adelaide Central Market Authority Board Members Selection Panel. I might defer to the CEO initially just to briefly explain that process for us, and then I'll be calling for nomination from councillors uh, to nominate with regards to a selection panel, uh, and my guess is to select board members for the Central Market, okay, Central Market, uh, um, Adelaide Central Market. Through you, Deputy Lord Mayor, the report is self-explanatory. It's a process that we need to undertake in order to appoint members to the to the board. So, um, I think the government staff have got the process in hand for three three points. So. Excellent. So, I'll uh, call on um, following the recommendation of councils to appoint three council members from uh, part of the board members to form part of the board member selection panel for the Adelaide Central Market Authority for the remainder of the 2018-22 council term. Um, and I'll call for council members. Councillor Hyde. I'd like to nominate the Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Abian. Okay. Um, any other nominations? Uh, and Councillor Ho. Would anyone else like to. <laughs> Councillor Branzo? Uh, I'll nominate Councillor Hyde. Okay. So just to deal with this procedurally first. Um, I'm happy to accept the nomination uh, to be on a panel. Uh, Councillor Ho, are you happy to accept the nomination to be uh, on the panel? No. Sorry? Not, not not yes or no? I need to no. no. Excellent. Thank you very much. Councillor Ibrahim Zeta, you've nominated Councillor Hyde. Would you like to accept the nomination, Councillor Hyde? I'll accept. Let's have two nominations. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Acting Lord Mayor. I'd like to nominate Councillor Donovan. Councillor Donovan, do you wish to accept? Yes. Okay, so we have three nominations. Any further nominations? Nope. Excellent. So we have three nominations. Can I have a councillor move to endorse the uh, appointments of those three nominees to the selection panel? Moved by Councillor Sims, seconded by Councillor Ibrahim Zede. Any debate? Excellent. I'll put that back to you, Councillor Sims. Some doubt. Okay. I'll put that to vote. All those in favour? All those against, that is carried. Okay, we'll move on to the following item. Item nine, uh, we're dealing with questions on notice. We have four questions on notice. Question number one, 9.1, .1, Councillor Moran, question on notice, standing orders. Um, Councillor, do you want to take that as read or would you like um, me to read it for you? Well, I just want to say that the um, answer in no way answers the question, except in one small part at the end. Um, so I actually wanted the definition of the word morality. Uh, I don't find that in this question. So I've lodged another question on notice for the next council meeting. Is that how you want to deal with it or would you like to deal with it tonight? Uh, well, obviously, they don't know what their definition is, so I'll give them a couple of weeks to find out. Okay, okay thank you, Councillor. So I'll take that item as, um, as dealt with for the mm -hmm. time being. Uh, item 9.2, Councillor Moran, the Old Lacornia site, question on notice. Would you like to take that as read? I'll take that as read, yes. Or should I read it through the gallery? Um, um, it's on currently on the agenda. If you wish to read it, you're welcome. Okay, well, look, the question is why is the start date? for the physical beginning and development of the old Lacornia site, now 222 at the earliest. And uh, I'm happy to take the answers read. Thank you. Councillor Moran, item 9.3, question on notice, annual rate review Lacornia site. Are you happy to take that as read? I'm happy to take both questions, the answer is read. Thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Hyde, question on notice, homeless management in the city of Adelaide. Would you like to take that as read? Yes. Thank you, Councillor. Councillors, item 10, questions without notice. Is there any questions without notice from any councillor? Okay. Members, item 11, motions on notice. 11.1, um, Councillor Abraham Zeta, motion on notice, safety measures for cyclists. Councillor, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I uh, um, Take that motion as um, as as written and seek a second. Though. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Is seconding your motion. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Um, uh, Acting Lord Mayor, uh, all members were presented with a petition a few weeks ago um, highlighting um, uh, safety issues around a particular intersection, intersection of North Terrace and George Street. 
Um, so uh, I wanted us as a council to look at that intersection and uh, explore safety measures, uh, especially around uh, bicycle safety. Um, North Terrace at that intersection, well, North Terrace generally is a two-lane uh, street on each direction. Um, at that intersection, there's a third uh, third lane that's uh, that's added, that's a turning lane, uh, and I wanted our uh, traffic engineers to, to have a look at that and come back to us with some, uh, um, uh, I guess, uh, safety recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Abraham Zeta. Councillor Sims is a seconder. Right. Members, would anyone like to speak to Councillor Abraham Zeta's motion? <laughs> Thanks, Lord Mayor, uh, Acting Lord Mayor. Um, just to um, thank uh, Councillor Abraham Zeta for putting this forward. Um, I think it's very important that we look at safety for cyclists within the city. Um, I think there's a broader piece of work to be done in terms of how we can improve safety across the board. Um, and um, obviously, we're looking at um, extending the cycling network. Um, and uh, I look towards that with. Um, excitement uh, because I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. We've been waiting a long time for that. Um, but I think this is uh, a good um, initiative and um, I'm supportive of uh, what Council Abbott has proposed. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Any other speakers? That there's none. Councillor Abraham Zeta, sum up. Summed up. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? That is carried. Item 11.2, Councillor Sims, motion on notice making renting fair. Thank Councillor you. Sims. Thanks, Acting Lord Mayor. I believe the motion is printed and seek a seconder. Councillor Moran. Thanks, Councillor Moran. Thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. Um, I might actually get administration just to push that up a little bit, if you don't mind, just so that I can reference it whilst I'm speaking. Thank you. Um, the uh, motion that I'm putting forward tonight is around council endorsing the campaign that's being run by Shelter SA and we heard from Dr Clark, the CEO of um, Shelter SA, about the campaign. So I won't go into much detail around that. But I do want to highlight for members the fact that 60% of City of Adelaide residents are renters. That's according to the uh, ABS statistics from 2016. And there was also a major report that was released just two weeks ago, the Australian Housing and Urban Research Centre report on housing in, in SA. And what that found, um, members, through you, uh, Acting Lord Mayor, was that we have more and more people, not just in Adelaide, but right across South Australia in general, that are living in long-term rental um, because they can no longer afford to break into the housing market. And so this motion really is um, about council recognising that, playing a role in terms of advocating for their interests, um, and also um, moving into the space of uh, talking about renters' rights, which is I do recognise has not traditionally um, been a, an area of focus for council, but one that I think is very important. Now, I know that some members will say, oh, stick to your lane, you know, this is a state government issue. But um, in putting this forward, I'm really evoking the uh, Councillor Hyde principle, um, and that is uh, us taking a position on a state government issue. Um, and I know that Councillor Hyde is um, proposing next a motion around demolition, which moves into the state government's remit. I'm very supportive of that. Um, but I encourage members to apply the same principle when considering this motion, that it's appropriate for us as a capital city uh, council to form a position on issues that are before the state parliament and to advocate for the community that we represent. And just to give you a bit of a snapshot, uh, Acting Lord Mayor, of some of the issues that we're dealing with here, this report, which I did uh, send out to members before the meeting, disrupted the consumer experience of renting in Australia, was prepared by Choice and Shelter, uh, Shelter nationally, talks about some of the experiences of people in the rental market. We know that 51% of people who rent are living in a home that currently needs repairs, 51%. Seven in 10 Australians who rent are concerned that a request for repairs could mean a rent rise. One in 10 think they'll be forced to move in the next 12 months. 83% of people who rent are concerned that they may need to move and the effort around that. And 47% of Australians who rent got a removalist to help them do so. So it's a costly um, ex uh, exercise. Let's have a one minute extension. Can I just get a show of hands from councillors, please, please? Can I get a show of hands, clear one? Thank you very much. Go Thank you. 
And it is a, a difficult and costly experience. I've been in the rental market myself as a long-term renter. I've experienced many of those things um, firsthand. Um, and you know, no one wants to go through the, uh, the stress of having to move regularly. We talked a little bit about pets, and I know that's been focused in the media, but I do want to draw councillors' attention to the no-cause evictions issue. That applies here in South Australia for periodic leases, but also when you're looking at a fixed-term lease, it in effect means that a, a landlord can say at the end of the lease, you can move on and you don't need to give an explanation for why a lease has not been renewed. And that does mean that many tenants are in constant fear of uh, eviction um, and um, that therefore they don't wish to raise issues that are adversely impacting on their tenancy. So this motion is really about council wanting to shift the balance back towards tenants and recognising that these are a huge um, segment of our community and we have a responsibility to represent their interests. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran is a seconder. I'll reserve my right. Thank you. Councillor Hyde, then Councillor Kira. Thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. Um, there are a few things I'll touch on in this motion, but uh, first up, seeing as it was raised by my learned colleague, Councillor Sims, um, I might like to explain what the Hyde principle actually is um, in advocacy, there are a couple of limbs to this principle. The first one is, uh, is the area, the policy area, uh, an area of policy that is proximate to us? So is it something we deal with directly? Obviously, we are not necessarily a sovereign arm of government. All the power we have is given to us by a little power of government higher than us. Um, and so sometimes we may need a little bit more power to properly administer the areas of policy that we're responsible for taking care of. That's, that's, uh, that's the first thing. The second is, uh, if it isn't an area of policy that is directly proximate to us, it's right next to us, um, is it an issue that has grown so large and affects our ratepayers and our constituents so much um, that we must advocate for it? Uh, will advocate on it. Um, and I put homelessness in that category, for example. It's not an area we have primary carriage over, but it is an issue that is really close to the city of Adelaide, particularly as a capital city council. Um, uh, in the first limb, you could put things such as uh, uh, outdoor, uh, outdoor, sorry, uh, liquor licensing fees. That's something that the state government, we have sort of uh, carriage over nightlife and the night economy, and yet the state government comes and make laws that adversely affects our rate pays in that sense. This motion before us is something that I would say doesn't or isn't caught by either of those ideas. So it is purely advocacy. Um, it's not really relevant to the city. And I acknowledge that people are experiencing um, uh, rental stress. I get that, I understand that. Um, but they're experiencing rental stress uh, because there aren't enough jobs in South Australia. It's not because landlords um, are, are these tyrannical um, uh, people um, reigning over their subjects um, yeah, in, a, in a very mean and unpredictable way. Um, it's because there aren't enough jobs. That's why That's why uh, people are struggling um, with the, paying for their accommodation and their mortgages in the sense of that as well. Um, now, I have great sympathy um, for renters. I am a renter um, uh, and there are certainly issues there. The lack of professionality in that sector, the fact that people think that they can play games with your um, uh, with your accommodation that they, on a whim, can, can determine various aspects of your life. Um, certainly, you know, I've been waiting for my stove to be fixed for two months now, um, and the only reason I'm not uh, concerned about it is because my housemates do not like my cooking at all, so I wouldn't recommend it. But at the end of the day, um, this campaign that we're being asked to support, in contradiction to what um, Alice Clark said, um, it is actually calling on all landlords, and I quote, all landlords and real estate agents um, should welcome pets. That's what, it, that's what it says. There were no caveats in the campaign that we're being asked to endorse here. Now, that, that I think is a ridiculous policy position and, and I can't support that one. Um, no cause evictions must be abolished. Well, to be quite frank, I, think, I don't think no cause evictions exist. If I could get one more minute. Um, show of hands. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Go ahead, I don't slide. think no cause evictions actually exist. I think if you're being evicted, it's because you don't have a secure tenancy, um, uh, and thus, it, because you're living in someone else's property, that person has the right to move you on. Now, it's worth highlighting as well that if if uh, that that your landlord asks you to move on, you still have 90 days, 90 days to move out of that property, um, uh, and that's that's a lot of time, and that is enough time to find alternative accommodation. Um, uh, now, the last point in this campaign, it's one I do agree with. 
um, resources for tenant education, information, advice, and advocacy must be increased. That's something I do support because a lot of the time, um, the people who would be adversely affected by being asked to move out within, uh, because due to a no cause eviction, those are the people that might not know their rights. Those are the people that might not know what's available to them, might not be equipped to deal with that, might not be able to afford, as Councillor Sims said, uh, the removalists to move out of home. So I do think we do need to educate people more, um, but I can't support this campaign in its entirety. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Kerry. Uh, well, thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, I'd, I'd like to echo Councillor Hyde's comments uh, about this topic. And I think, um, I think it's actually worth reflecting. This is a, a little bit of a case study uh, in some principles that we ought to actually think about when, in local government. Um, the principle that we, we stick to what our remit is, uh, we stick to what it is that we are elected and delegated to do, is an, actually a very important principle. Uh, the reason it's important is because uh, if you don't do that, if you, if you outreach, if you, if you go beyond what, it is, what the electorate uh, expect and what, what your, your lawful, your legislative remit is, you start to distort the electoral outcomes. People have voted for you. They don't expect you to be, to be reaching in to this level of policy. Um, so the, the, the first issue with this, it is a, we've got to be very careful. There is a downside to sticking out beyond what we are supposed to actually be dealing with. Clearly, this is an area, renting the renters market, this is an area that the public, that the electorate delegate to the state government. Uh, the second issue, the second issue, Acting Lord Mayor, about this is that, uh, and, and again, um, my computer stopped working, so I don't know why I'm reaching for it. Um, again, Acting Lord Mayor, the, the, You've got, to, you've got to actually look at and say to yourself, well, on the one hand, I actually agree with the principles. I actually agree with the sentiment uh, of this motion, but is this motion going to achieve the outcome that it is proposing to, to do? And I look at the actual motion, the sums of the motion, we are taking positions. We are not saying to the state government, we want to help the lot of renters. We've all been renters. I've been a renter. We've all been through it. You know, I've been lucky enough to purchase a house now late in life, but I, I have been through renting and through the whole squalid uh, uh, life of being a renter, you know, so we're, we've all been there. But is this going to achieve the outcomes? We are taking positions here. No cause evictions must be abolished and resources and landlords must uh, welcome pets. The, the issue and the fundamental issue, and I do hope, I do hope Councillor Sims will find a uh, space to consider this argument at the very least. Is this going to increase the number of rental spaces available for the public? Because that is ultimately the only way you help renters. You do not help renters if you reduce the available rental stock. You only help them, you only help them, you only empower them if you increase the available rental stock. That is because renting and accommodation is a market system. That is a system we've been delegate, we, we have agreed that is our democracy. Okay, if you want to change that, if you want to make all of renting government provided, well, we switch to a communist system or a command system. Oh, oh, Councillor Sim says, and there you have it. There is no, there is no interest in, there is no interest, uh, may I say, Deputy, uh, Acting Lord Mayor, in actually assessing the real outcomes if I could have a dollar minute. There, there, there is councillors. Thank no, you. Thanks. Got a show of hands. Got a no, it's all party political, isn't it? We don't care about what actually happens to renters as long as we can virtue signal no. how great we are. So that that so I'll, I'll leave that as it is. But but can I just re reiterate this? You've got to be careful when you make these decisions. Are you acting in a way that reduces the overall rental stock? We are in a recession. Unfortunately, the way the system operates, you need to encourage people to build houses and people to rent. That is how you help renters act in law. There are other ways we can help renters. There are many ways we can help renters in this chamber. We can reduce rates, we can reduce the cost base. All of these actually have an outcome that helps renters. But in this instance, and I, I'm saying this with, in good faith on this motion because I do appreciate Councillor Sims' concerns, this is overreach. This will damage the very people it seeks to help. Councillor Kerr, thank you. Councillor Moran. Uh, <clears throat> look, I support this motion. Um, the democracy, demography of rental people has now changed dramatically as home ownership pushes people out into older um, age groups, which uh, often leads to having children there wanting pets. 
Um, just to glance on that, the um, thing doesn't say you have to have pets at all. It um, just opens that ability a little bit more rather than the default position saying no pets. There is, it, uh, <clears throat> it certainly doesn't compulsory make every landlord and it, it's very annoying to have these motions uh, mischievously misread and misrepresented. Um, this would uh, advocacy, just to remind the people that have been here for five minutes, is part of our job, to advocate social changes to the uh, state government uh, for our ratepayers is absolutely front and central of our jobs, as the next motion is very valuable too. Uh, to argue that uh, this doesn't achieve any outcomes, not voting for it certainly doesn't achieve any outcomes. Voting for it might achieve some outcomes, and that's why I will be voting for it. Uh, I agree with Councillor Hyde, not all of it I, I firmly believe, but I think it's certainly going in the right direction. And often you have to overreach a little bit to come back to what you might be able to achieve. Um, as I said, yes, advocacy is um, definitely uh, part of our job to the state government. And I noticed a very interesting uh, suggestion for ad advocacy uh, to the state government recently was that university pay rates. I totally think that's an interesting thing to look at. I don't necessarily agree with it, but that is in exactly the same category of this. Uh, not enough jobs, of course, uh, if they're all jobs, we'd all own houses, wouldn't we? And it would be great. Um, to overreach and say we can't do small incremental changes because we can't achieve the big changes is a cop-out. It's also a cop-out to say that this is party political. Councillor Sims and I could not be more different politically. Um, and I totally uh, would like to go down this route. Many of our voters now are renters. It used not to be the case, but as I said, because people are establishing, many people raise their families and stay in a rental property all their life now. And it's a choice that young people have to make. Will we buy or will we continue renting? And continuing renting is a choice that many people are taking nowadays. So these are rate payers. These are voters, sorry, more likely. These are people establishing their homes and not in the old days that, uh, that when renters were share houses, students, people that didn't really care less about the house, if the fridge didn't work, it didn't matter. And I think these are the young families now. These are a whole different demography of people that are renting. And while I don't agree everything in Shelter SA make renting fair campaign, uh, that doesn't mean we throw the baby out with the bathwater. I think this is a sensible motion, and I think the theatrics in this chamber from certain members are shameful. Councillor Moran, thank you. Councillor Abrahams, uh... Thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. Um, uh, I'm not going to repeat what Councillor Hyde and Councillor Kira uh, uh, mentioned earlier, but I do echo their, uh, their concerns. Um, uh, you know, I think Councillor Moran touched on something, something really, really good here, and that is uh, advocacy. Uh, last time I remember the Residential Tenancies Act, uh, when, when it was amended last, uh, would have been um, 2014 or so, and, uh, and it, was, it was changed to better suit uh, victims of domestic violence uh, fleeing uh, perpetrators. Um, when that, well before that change uh, took place, I was part of a uh, small group of uh, uh, peak bodies and not-for-profits who lobbied the government to, to get that change. So, um, uh, we, sh we, we should be advocates, and we are advocates, but um, Councillor Sims, you know, you can be an advocate um, in your own right. There's nothing stopping you from picking up a piece of paper, and picking up a pen and writing a letter to your local MP. There's nothing stopping you from uh, speaking to peak bodies and other associations who might be interested in making this change. There's nothing stopping you from going and speaking to your, uh, to your local member. So uh, I think we can all be advocates in our own rights, but bringing something into the chamber, I don't know whether if that is going to achieve anything, but uh, I'll, leave that, uh, I'll leave that to the members and I urge them not to support this. Councillors, any other councillors to speak? Councillor Sims, to sum up. Thank you, Acting Landlord, uh, Lord Mayor. <laughs> so Acting Lord Mayor, <laughs> apologies. Um, just to uh, sum up, um, uh, acting Lord Mayor. Um, 
I found this a really interesting debate. I, I want to thank um, Councillor Hyde uh, for um, finally uh, enunciating how the Hyde principle works. Anything that he puts forward is uh, within Council's remit. Anything that I put forward, well, that's out of scope. Um, and just to uh, let members know how absurd some of these arguments are, I mean, this council, um, Adelaide City Council, has formed a position on a range of different campaigns. It supported raising the rate, it, uh, the rate of New Start. It supported the uh, Everybody's Home campaign to address the shortage of social and affordable housing. It's also a welcome city, which is about welcoming refugees. It supported a motion from Councillor Donovan earlier this term around advocating for changes to immigration laws. Of course, our role, and indeed it is articulated under the uh, City of Adelaide Act, is to be advocates for our community. And a big portion of the electorate we represent are residents, and 60% of those are renters. So these are our constituents. We have an obligation to advocate for their interests. And uh, I think it's very disappointing that some members don't take that into account. We should also recognise that we have a very, very clear policy position in favour of making Adelaide a livable city. And we talk a lot about making Adelaide a livable city for everybody. And if we genuinely want Adelaide to be a livable city for everybody, then that means ensuring that we don't just advocate for vested interests and those with uh, you know, dollars behind them, that we advocate for every member of our community and we ensure that everybody has an opportunity to live in this city. And if we're going to say to potential residents in the city of Adelaide, well, I'm sorry, if you want to move into the city, that's fine, but you've got to leave your pet behind, you've got to leave a member of your family behind, then that's not really making um, Adelaide a very livable or inclusive city. Or if we say to uh, residents in our city, we want you to live here, but recognise that you might be out within 12 months at the end of your lease and we're not going to advocate for protections for you, then that's not really making Adelaide a very livable city. Now, the other part of this motion is uh, for council to organise a public meeting um, and to hear from the experience of experiences of people in the rental market firsthand and to share those with the government. If this motion doesn't uh, get supported tonight, then I will organise a public meeting myself um, and uh, I will engage with residents and hear their concerns and, um, and certainly raise those with the minister myself. Um, but it would be better for council to back this so that we can have a more representative um, discussion within the community. Um, just one, uh, one minute. Can I get a show of hands, please, councillors? Thanks, everybody. Thank uh, I do need to respond to um, Councillor Kira's suggestion that this is some sort of communist plot. Um, I have been called Oops, Red yeah. Rob. I have been called Red Rob before, but never for um, advocating for the rights of residents in our city. I mean, what nonsense is that? Um, really, we have a responsibility to stand up for all of our residents, not just homeowners. And um, I encourage councillors to think long and hard before they turn their noses up at them by rejecting this motion. Thank you, Lord, uh, Acting Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Members, I'll put the motion to you. All those in favour of the motion? All those against? A division has been called. Councillors, a division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Donovan, Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims. Councillors, we move on to item 11.3, Council Hyde, motion on notice preventing premature demolition of buildings in the city of Adelaide. Thank Second, you. We've got a second already, Councillor Sims. Thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. I move the motion as printed and seek a second. Councillor Sims is seconding your motion. Oh, sorry, sorry. that's what I said. Um, uh, thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. I won't labour this point um, because I think it seems pretty straightforward um, and has been well received both by the public um, and actually by the sector itself, which for local government to achieve is, uh, is a bit of a coup to have the property council on site. Um, uh, and I think it, it just uh, speaks volumes that we're actually doing something that um, makes a lot of sense. But um, as, as I've made the point already, um, uh, what brought me um, to this idea, uh, uh, in addition to um, the situation that we, uh, 
that we saw on Hutt Street, where there were two uh, lovely uh, heritage listed cottages that were destroyed, annihilated, obliterated um, for uh, a development that never went ahead. Um, and it now sits there as a, an illegal car park, actually, which is disused, um, which I was glad to get shut down as well. Um, uh, we must protect our heritage in the city, um, is what I'm saying here. Um, and that's why this motion speaks to heritage specifically. Um, but more broadly, um, there is no reason for us to destroy buildings um, uh, that, uh, that haven't reached the end of the useful life um, until they are to be replaced um, in the city uh, by another building. Um, that's, uh, that seems like bread and butter business for the council, but the state government in their latest draft of the Planning and Design Code are seeking to remove um, that power from us. Uh, so I think we need to take a stand um, uh, and we need to say that, look, this is a power the city has historically had. Um, uh, we're a capital city council. Uh, we're able to deal with these sorts of things, uh, noting that they're under 10 million anyway, because SCAP has anything above that. But um, uh, we're mature enough and considered enough to know uh, when a building needs to be demolished um, uh, and we should be preserving this power um, at the local government level. Um, as well, uh, I'd, make the note, I'd make the point that um, the, uh, the Lord Mayor's office has worked closely, um, uh, or I've worked closely with them actually on this, um, as, as well as with administration. Um, and, and so you can truly say that all stakeholders are on the side and I thank um, uh, Lord Mayor Bashaw's uh, office and her, also her desire to see heritage in the city preserved um, as uh, I hope, looking around the room, I think this might actually be unanimous. So I, I uh, uh, endorse the motion. Councillor Simpson is seconder. Don't, don't bet on it, Councillor Hyde. I see Councillor Kira has his hand up. Let's wait and see what he uh, has to say. Oh, um, but I'm, uh, I'm uh, very keen to uh, support this application of the Hyde principle. Um, I think uh, this is absolutely a part of our role to advocate for the state government to um, make changes. It is beyond our remit. Um, but it is appropriate for us to um, advocate. Um, and I, I agree that this is an issue that is of concern to um, many residents and, and ratepayers in the city. It's heartbreaking to see um, our heritage buildings um, being, uh, well, knocked down um, unnecessarily or being left um, to uh, become derelict. Um, and. You know, I think one of the things we need to remember when we talk about heritage in our city is that once these buildings are lost, um, we don't ever uh, get them back again. We can't recreate um, the uh, historic buildings of our city. Um, they're so integral to the character of our city and um, they're about making our city a community. So um, I'm very supportive of what um, Councillor Hyde is uh, trying to do here and um, I encourage other members to support it as well. Thank you, Councillor Simpson. Members, is anyone speaking against this motion? Councillor Kerry speaking against it. Well, um, well, well, I'm speaking out to Lord Mayor. Do I need to be against? I'm just asking a question to try to. Um, I, I don't know. I'm speaking, but. Uh, <laughs> well, I'd appreciate when members are speaking to actually be clear if they're speaking for or against the motion. So I've asked the question if you are speaking against the motion. Are you speaking just against? A question, a question of procedure, acting Lord Mayor. Are we prevented from speaking where we may have some uh, reservations about the motion, but we may be in favour of the motion uh, no. equally? No, but as long as you're clear in your deliberations. To well, I'll, I'll, I'll be very clear that I, that is my position. I have some reservations. There you go. But I, at the other hand, so I'll, I'll leave it up to you. I'll take your direction. No, no, uh, you're, you're welcome speak? to speak to your motion. I just wanted to see if there's any dissent from the floor. If there isn't any, please go ahead and speak for or against. Or okay, sorry, you, you forgive me. I mean, I'm entirely saying this in good faith. I'm, I am, no, 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 but, but uh, young and, yeah. Um, so, well, well, thank you, Acting Lord Mayor. Look, um, as I said, I, I do speak uh, in some favour of this motion because we all, uh, we all don't want to see a replication of the incident on Hutt Street. Uh, no one wants to see heritage buildings through crafty means uh, knocked over and demolished. Um, no one wants to see that. But at the same time, there, I, I am troubled um, in particular by uh, uh, Part B, which says, uh, you know, ensure that, that uh, to, sorry, I need my glasses. Um, Ensure uh, sites are not left vacant unnecessarily. It just says ensure sites are not left vacant unnecessarily. It doesn't say heritage listed sites. And uh, perhaps if Councillor Hyde would like to address my reservation, I'd be I'd be very grateful in this summing up. But 
the the issue I've got is that, uh, and to put the other side of this motion, uh, to put the other side of this motion, that is that uh, we are, and again, it's got to be it's got to be uh, repeated. We're in a, a dreadful recession uh, in the city. We are in a recession in the city, and often what small businesses have, what the only thing they have, the only asset, the only equity they've got left is they may own the building in which they operate and they seek to sell that building. Uh, if we start to introduce things that may have the unaffected effect, uh, unintended effect of torpedoing land prices and then the prices that small businesses receive for their buildings, we ought to think twice about that. So that, that's my reservation because we are not talking just about heritage buildings. We're talking about maintaining demolition controls. Uh, where we're talking about unnecessarily demolishing uh, in general, any sort of building. And generally speaking, that is a decision that is a commercial, that is a commercial uh, decision. Uh, so once you have these sorts of intrusions, you start to make Adelaide a market that's less attractive for capital. So it is actually a very important reservation act in Lord Mayor. Uh, it is something that we must think about and is something that must be addressed when we bring in motions like this. We cannot go about uh, bringing in motions that distort the, 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 the efficient operation of a market without realising it has a real and material effect on real people and their livelihoods. So that is my reservation and I'm very open to hear uh, why it is that is not a concern. Thank you, Councillor Kira. Councillor Moran. I'm happy to answer that one. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, the motion from our reader does mean all vacant buildings uh, and I think it should. There is absolutely no reason to pull any building down before uh, the develop new development is um, spade worthy and going to happen. That is usually in the large developments when 75% have been pre-sold. Uh, there is no reason to leave an empty block, uh, which usually is used as a at-grade car park, which sucks the life out of the city often. So I don't see that, that as a concern at all, and I hope that uh, Councillor Hyde leaves it as all buildings. Um, if we had that rule when the La Cornu site was there, we'd still have the longest curved glass building in the world, which could have at least been a bit of a tourist attraction. So I do not, um, I, I wasn't gonna speak on this because I thought it was so plain, but when the concerns that the previous speaker voiced I think that they aren't concerns and uh, uh, that it should be absolutely clear that no building should be removed of any sort unless it's dangerous, da 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 da, -da. Uh, And I don't see how that can affect or dampen development in any shape or form. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Members, anyone else would like to speak to this motion for or against? Before I hand over to Councillor Hyde, I might just make a quick remark. Um, look, I support this um, generally, and it's something we floated previously in the Council. The reason I do believe this is Council's business is because Council had planning control for a long time that's been taken away from Council, and this is why we're having to go back to the State Government to be able to negotiate some outcomes around planning that affect our community. Um, so I do think this is a worthwhile motion to support in that regard. But also the other thing to consider, uh, which is really important to Councillor Moran's point, when we're talking about demolition of buildings in the city, um, there is always an opportunity for Council to intervene in the likes of use of Renew Adelaide, et cetera, to be able to activate sites that are not currently activated. But when you've got an empty site, it becomes a problem and it becomes a political problem for Council, which we have seen occur in 88 O'Connell Street, <coughs> where council and government had to intervene and potentially buy the building at much higher than a market rate, which cost our rate payers more. So I think having good control in place that could potentially eliminate demolishment. I mean, the only reason someone would demolish a building is because they want to develop. Otherwise, when you demolish something that has value, you lose value of the property. And it becomes a property that could not potentially generate revenue because council is not likely to uh, allow you a DBA to be able to open up for a car park. So you cannot generate revenue from the land either because we're quite strict in that regard. So look, with all that in mind, uh, I'm, I'm supportive of this and I really hope that we can apply it as soon as possible. Uh, members, I'll pass on back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Thank you, Acting Lord Mayor, um, uh, and for your highly informative comments. Um, the first point you made that uh, really brings me back to it, it, this is a power that we currently have. 
um, uh, and we're basically just saying, please let us have what, what little control over planning you've let us retain. Can we please have that? Um, that's essentially what we're saying to the state government. Will they listen or not? Um, uh, that's, uh, I guess, up to them. But uh, but we're putting the case, and it is it is good to advocate. Um, uh, and this, of course, meets uh, both of the tests of the Hyde principle, that is, it's an area of policy <laughs> proximate to us, and that and it is proposed by you. And, and, and that it is. Stop a, using that in the chamber, please. And large, uh, a, a refrain from large. using such things in the chamber. Um, uh, but uh, yes, I would um, I would thank members for their support, and I think Councillor Moran summed it up beautifully um, in talking about the corn use side, which uh, I heard someone mention earlier today um, about this curved window. Oh, what is this curved window? I have no idea. And of course, the La Corne use side has been vacant since before I was born by probably about five or six <laughs> years. So let's let's just put that into perspective. Um, uh, uh, and of course, it is vacant because because it was it was demolished. It was demolished prematurely. Um, that is what we're seeking uh, to address here. Um, and uh, and we just want to we want to save the significant buildings um, in the city of Adelaide. And I hope this goes some way to achieving that. Thank you, Councillor. Members, I'll put the motion to you. All those in favour? All those against? Shame. <laughs> A division has been called. Councillor Kerr. Councillors, a division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing till all names have been called. Councillor Donovan, Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Moran and Councillor Sims. Thank you, members. Uh, this concludes the motions on notice. We move on to item 12, motions without notice. Is there any motions without notice? Okay, yeah, that there's none. I'll move on to item 13. Um, item 13 deals with the exclusion of the public to deal with a matter, which is matter 14.1.1, recommendation for committee in confidence. And the recommendation one talks to greening awards. Councillor Donovan, did you want to declare a conflict now and exit, or would you like to do it later? Sure, I'll declare it now. Material will exit as per previously due to uh, my street being involved. Members, just waiting on uh, members of the public to exit. Can I have a mover and a seconder for the exclusion first? That's okay. Moved by Councillor Sims, seconded by Councillor Canole. Any discussion? I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? If I could have uh, members that are not directly related, staff and... Yep, please be shown if you don't mind. <laughs> Members, I with that declare the meeting closed at 7.04 p.m. And thank you for your attendance. Well done, Sam. That's a quick meeting.